We start in Russia where President Nicolás Maduro arrived for a visit that will boost economic and political ties with uh, that country. Our correspondent in Moscow, Hans Eloro, update us. El presidente venezolano Nicolás President Maduro is coming to Moscow on a working visit as he announced a few hours earlier on Twitter. The visit comes immediately after the Venezuelan president hosted his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan in Caracas. On Wednesday, Maduro will meet the Russian president Vladimir Putin in the Kremlin. They'll be talking about the strategic challenge of boosting economic and trade links, especially in the face of sanctions imposed by the United States on both Russia and Venezuela. The last time the two leaders met in Moscow was a little over a year ago when President Maduro came to the Russian Energy Week. On that occasion, the Venezuelan president put forward the idea of adopting a basket of currencies for trade in oil as an alternative to the U.S. dollar. This idea has also been taken up by Russia, and given the unilateral sanctions imposed by Washington, Moscow has been increasing its trade with Asia, especially China, and with Latin America, including Venezuela. For example, the Russian energy company Gazprom has a number of agreements to work with Venezuela in its Orinoco oil belt. There's also the Petro, Venezuela's cryptocurrency, where there is talk of cooperation with Russia's Association for Cryptocurrencies and Blockchain. We should learn more about that tomorrow when the presidents meet, and we'll be following all the developments on President Maduro's visit here in Moscow. On Monday, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan criticized the use of sanctions on Venezuela during a visit to the country to reinforce economic, cultural and social ties. The statement came after he met with President Maduro. Demonstrating resistance is a very noble position for Venezuela. We know that countries want to dominate and pressure as they do with the rest of the world. And they have even threatened their lives and personal integrity. But no cowardly action and no threat can overthrow the will of the Venezuelan people. I condemn it. Now to Ecuador, where the Vice President Maria Alejandra Vicuña has resigned. This comes after accusations were made against her for allegedly requesting illegal payments from members of her party on Monday. President Lenin Moreno suspended her from her duties. Vicuña says she is resigning to save Ecuador from instability. A person with no shame has been used to accuse me on TV, with nobody double-checking, without anyone asking me. 77 lawmakers in the Assembly have asked for my resignation as they believe this pack of lies, denying me the most basic right to defense. Don't doubt. I will continue working for Ecuador. I have no need for high office to do that. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has vowed to send a proposal to Senate to end presidential immunity. The proposal is aimed at ending this practice established under the Constitution by which the president cannot be taken into court. This was one of the promises the new president made during his campaign. Oi. Today, I'm sending the first initiative to the Senate for the reform of Article 108 of the Constitution to suspend the immunity of the President of the Republic. The President will be able to be tried like any other citizen for any crime. Of course, he will be able to be tried for the crime of corruption even in office. López Obrador has also signed his first decree as president, the creation of a truth commission for the case of the 43 missing students of Ayotzinapa. The signing of a decree ordering a new truth commission to investigate the forced disappearance of the 43 students from the Isidro Burgos School of Ayotzinapa is the first action of the new president of Mexico. Investigar a fondo. We want to thoroughly investigate and impartially clarify what happened that tragic night so that all Mexicans know what really happened. The events of September 2014 represent one of the most serious violations of human rights in the country's recent history. López Obrador, who took over on December 1st, has said that the presidential decree aims to grant the truth and justice that the relatives of the disappeared have been claiming for more than four years. With this decree, the executive branch of government gives you and the commission all its support in order to find the truth. The document was signing the presence of relatives of the disappeared, who asked to be taken out of the garbage dump in which the outgoing government of Enrique Peña Nieto left them. 
We no longer want to be mocked. We have been humiliated and repressed. Sir, what we have done is defend ourselves, and you are an example for us. Three state secretaries will support the commission, which will be made up of relatives of the disappeared students, as well as professionals and technical experts. Its immediate role will be to take up the prosecutor's office investigation, which, according to the new administration, was incomplete. Now we update on the situation of the Central American migrant caravan in Mexico. Migrants at a shelter near the U.S.-Mexico border are resistant to leave for new shelters miles away from the crossing. Local authorities have been relocating the migrants so to a new shelter far away from the border after heavy rain flooded the old one. However, many migrants are refusing to leave, saying they do not want to be so far away. Authorities have pledged not to carry out forced evictions, but have cut off all services to the old shelter so that migrants have to leave. <laughs> A footage showing migrants jumping over the border fence in Tijuana as border authorities watched, watched them from a distance was revealed. The migrants managed to cross into the U.S., although it's unclear whether they were apprehended. At least, at least 6,000 migrants from across Central America have traveled to Tijuana to try and obtain asylum in the U.S. With the details, our correspondent in Mexico, Pablo Perez. Here right behind me, you can see what is left of the shelter at the Benito Juarez Support Complex here in Tijuana. Heavy rain and deteriorating conditions has made it uninhabitable, plus a cut in services to migrants has forced many out. Yet still about 400 people remain camped outside. They are reluctant to move to another location being offered to them. That's because it's located in an unsafe neighborhood. Just over two weeks ago, these migrants arrived here and now they are being told it's time to move again. Meanwhile, as many as 2,000 people are being temporarily housed at the El Barretal building, the facility has become the newest shelter for Central American migrants seeking a better life in the U.S. Time for a break here at From the South, but you can find us on Twitter as Telesur English and Laura P. Telesur. Stay with us. Actions have an impact on the environment. It's our responsibility to change for the sake of our planet. Let's be part of this transition. Watch, preserve, and protect your green zone. Wednesdays, only on Telesur. Enjoy our programming from Monday to Friday, where you'll find the best information on culture, innovation, conservation, human well-being. Keep up to date on the latest innovations in science and technology with Atomun. The habits and knowledge you need to live a healthy lifestyle are on Guide Your Body. Environmental consciousness is required to preserve our Earth Undergo your transformation on Green Zone. All about equity, diversity, and respect for identities on By Gender, cultural manifestations, the art in all its forms, and the stories of real lives. Every day we feature a wide variety of content only on Telesur, the news source from Latin America and the Caribbean.
we are back. The Supreme Court of Brazil will decide on whether it issues a new writ for the former president Lula da Silva as his defense team hoped to secure his freedom. Lula's defense argues that just Sergio Moro was biased on his earlier decision. His lawyers want the whole process to be scrapped and Lula to be released. The Federal Public Prosecutor's Office has rejected the request. However, judges of the Supreme Federal Court will decide whether they grant the order. The Attorney General of Brazil has condemned President Michel Temer and two other ministers for corruption. According to the magistrate, Temer and its ministers will have received more than $1 trillion in bribes from the Odebrecht construction company during 2014. All three could be removed from their posts. Now to Peru, where the political opposition is denouncing former President Alberto Fujimori and the Aprista Bank for trying to modify a money laundering law. This modification will benefit politicians being investigated for the crime, including Keiko Fujimori and Alan Garcia. Committees of the Congress approved without a debate a policy that favors politicians investigated for laundering assets. This is highly dangerous because what it does is to put requirements for certain political characters or political parties to be investigated for corruption and to previously have to get a report from the OVNET to carry out the investigations. That in the first place violates the autonomy of the public ministry. Unfortunately, the drafting of this project gives way to mitigation and there is a succession of rules which could benefit even those who are already being investigated. This is a dangerous rule if it is not discussed correctly. In Costa Rica has finally been approved with the controversial tax reform which triggered one of the country's largest strikes over the past three months. On Monday, President Carlos Alvarado signed it into a law two hours after it was passed by Congress. He said that with the reform, the country had avoided an economic crisis. The law was the basis of a strong confrontation between the government and workers' unions. In Argentina, Mauricio Macri's government has approved a controversial proposal which allowed the security forces to fire their weapons without giving a warning. Our correspondent in Argentina, Edgardo Esteban, has the details. The government of Mauricio Macri has approved a resolution to allow security forces to shot people by the back in certain cases. Human rights organizations have rejected the resolution they now call Easy Trigger. In 2017 alone, there were 258 cases of civilians shot by security forces. Now this can be used to justify the action of police forces during protests. The situation has created concern among the people. In Bolivia, where it was rejected, a report published by the U.S. regarding their fight against human trafficking. We explain more on this story. Bolivia has denied a report by the United States regarding the fight against human trafficking in the Latin American country. The report shows that only 44 sentences were issued between 2016 and 2017, but our report on human trafficking shows that there were 59 sentences in 2017 alone. The U.S. report also touches on Bolivia's fight against child labor. But Bolivia's government minister said the report is unfair and threatens the country with economic sanctions. We have always supported regional strategies to fight this kind of crimes. But we regret that the United States is not supporting our actions to fight crime because of political and ideological reasons. Public officials say they have signed more than 20 agreements to fight human trafficking. If Bolivia didn't have socialist and progressive views, these reports wouldn't exist. We have all the elements to objectively prove the efforts that we have made in the fight against human trafficking and child labor. The report also announces sanctions against Bolivia and 17 other countries. The U.S. has also threatened to cut humanitarian help and commercial ties in 2019. 
And now the United Nations has condemned increasing murders of social leaders and human rights activists in Colombia. UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights Michael Frosty said that the UN is consider, concerned by failure of the Colombian government to bring preparators to justice, which they say encourage security forces and paramilitaries paramilitari to act with impunity. There has been an upsurge in murders of social leaders since the government and the FARC signed the peace agreement in 2016. The report is in fact uh, the voices of in the regions, uh, the voices of defense, uh, how they voice their concerns uh, to the government uh, and to the international community uh, on the uh, severity of the attacks uh, they are facing uh, and the fact that they are sometimes left helpless uh, in face uh, of such attacks. Uh. And according to a Colombian radio station, the political leader of the revolutionary alternative force, Ivan Marquez, was in Bogota. Telesur spoke to other party leaders who said they had no knowledge of where Marquez is, but instead, instead on protection for their lives. We don't know where that information comes from. We have no confirmation. In Colombia, there is freedom of mobility. You can walk anywhere and he doesn't have an arrest warrant against him. And I don't see any problems. A Colombian indigenous community is about to be displaced for a second time from their territories in Cartagena. The Senu people was being forced to leave the land where they lived for more than 10 years. The main concern for our families is that we don't know where we're going. There is no plan. There are children, old people, pregnant women. We need to have a plan that takes into account the needs of our community. A good solution is that the government could leave us here, because we have already done great work. We have developed crops and productive projects. It's been more than 10 years since we've been here, and people are already used to it. Some children were born here. Authorities need to guarantee the same living conditions we have here, and to guarantee lands as well. Now we move to Chile, where the trial of Mapucho Ronco Facundo Jones has become, has become for burning Pisu Pisu a country state at the possession of a firearm. The prosecution is calling for Jones to sentence to 15 years in prison. Facundo's attorney said there is no evidence for the charges against him and that he's been profiled as an enemy of the Chilean state. 53 Ch former Chilean agents that work under the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet have been sentenced to prison. Their sentences range from, range from 3 to 20 years in prison. The agents were charged in relation to the kidnap and execution of eight members of the Communist Party of Chile. The victims' bodies were thrown into the sea, a common repressive tactic, tactic in the 70s. Time for a second break. Hearing from the South, stay tuned. Telesur brings you special interviews with social and political personalities. Monday, from Washington. Tuesday, from Mexico. Wednesday, from Caracas. Thursday, from Quito. Friday, from Havana. Analysis about our continent's reality. Weekdays, only on Telesur. Follow the most important global events through a comprehensive perspective with a team of journalists in 25 locations around the world to convey our people's reality. From the South, weekday, only on Telesur.
are back. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has warned that the United States will not be able to stop them from exporting oil. Rouhani pointed out that if the country stops exporting, then no oil will come out of the Persian Gulf. His speech comes as the U.S. continues to impose sanctions on Iranian financial and oil sector. The United States cannot interrupt our relationship with the nation we, as dear and friendly neighbors, has been together for centuries. The United States cannot stop our trade relations with the region and the world. At least nine Palestinians have been injured in a protest when Israeli forces used tear gas and firearms to disperse them. Palestinians had gathered to show their support for the flotilla ship in an attempt to break the Israeli siege in Gaza, on Gaza. The Gaza National Committee said they will continue to their efforts. The North Korean foreign minister is on Syria to consolidate ties as both countries face aggression by the United States. Both countries are facing the strain of being under U.S.-imposed sanctions. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad stressed that the Syrian-North Korean alliance will change the balance of power, allowing them to become a force in, the, in their own right. A Houthi mission has arrived in Sweden for Yemen peace talks, sponsored by the United Nations. UN envoy Martin Griffith hopes the process will allow for a peace agreement that will end the nearly four-year-old conflict. Tens of thousands have been killed and millions are facing a starvation in what has been described as one of the worst humanitarian catastrophes. Yemen's President Hadi will also be attending the talks. The last round of negotiations broke down when the Houthis failed to attend in September. Very soon we will be able to start talks uh, among the, the parties. Uh, to that end, and to assist that process forward, Mr. Griffiths is in Sanaa right now. Uh, we will see when we can announce uh, the dates for, for talks, but we are hopeful that it will happen uh, in, in fairly short course, but we need uh, uh, a number of conditions to be exactly right before we can, uh, before we can set, settle that. Following the last days of protests and violent clashes, the French Prime Minister, Edouard Philippe, announced that the rise in fuel taxes will be suspended for six months. He also said increases in the price of gas and electricity will, be not, will not be implemented this winter as planned. However, he said President Emmanuel Macron still wants to make cuts to the public deficit while moving towards a greener economy. These decisions to make immediately must bring peace and serenity to the country. They should enable us to engage in a real dialogue on all the concerns that have been expressed in the recent weeks. We must reflect together on the pace of the ecological transition while maintaining its ambition. Hello, West protesters are now considering their next steps. After the government's decision, many say they don't trust the government's change of mind. While the protest becomes over fuel tax, they have a snowball into a wider movement against poverty and President Macron's policies. There is no increase, but they'll always be able to tax somewhere else, or in any case, they'll freeze it for a few months, and then, once it comes down a bit, they'll raise it. That's it. And then, for the moratorium, we don't actually want it. We want concrete things now. Opposition and political movements in France are also calling on the government to accept responsibility for the unrest and give on clearer commitments. People have learned not to trust the government's promises. What remains a moratorium on postponement is not an outright cancellation. It remains a setback that can very well turn into no setback at all. Then it is a yellow vest that will decide their movement. But I don't think that's going to be enough to get the river back into its course, because now it has overflowed and the people are waiting for something else as an answer. The hunger strike by several Catalan independence prisoners is now on its fourth day. Political politicians Jordi Durul and Jordi Sanchez are calling for the removal of all obstacles that, in their opinion, the Spanish government is imposing to hamper their efforts for independence. Several Catalonian politicians remain in prison waiting for the trial. The government of Catalonia is supporting the hunger strike on the grounds that their rights are being violated. 
Like this, we've come to the end of this news brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website, telesurenglish.net, where you can find more opinion articles and special interviews. Stay with Telesur, connecting the global thousand. Thank you for watching.